This presentation will be sort of a time travel back to the beginning of the research production process uh, when we have to set up a lab that will produce the results that we'll, we will hopefully publish eventually. Uh, I start introducing Trento, since this is the lab I have in mind. Oops, sorry, the, oh, some, some, the slides are not working. Well, let's hope it is only this one not working. So Trento, you see here, is in the north of Italy. It is a small city, about 100,000 inhabitants, uh, in the center of the mountains, Lake Garda or Dolomites. This is the region where we are. And it is a smart city. Surprisingly, it is always on the top of the ranks of smart cities in Italy. And this is essentially for two reasons, for two factors that are uh, considered in these, uh, in these ranks. The first one is that Trento has a high quality of life. So, uh, good services for health, for education, uh, low unemployment, uh, good environment, and so. And second, uh, we have many infrastructures, ICT infrastructures. This means, of course, the highways, so um, optical fiber, uh, open data, and so on and so forth. We also have many research centers. We have more than uh, 1,000 researchers uh, in computer science in a very small environment. Uh, we have companies and so. Now the question is, are these two factors, well actually these two factors are thanks to Bruno Kessler, this uh, politician who invested strongly both in ICT, in research, and in the quality of life in the territory. But the question is, are these two reasons uh, correlated? So to which extent the ICT infrastructures uh, contribute to the quality of life? And uh, the uh, answer I have so far, it is not a scientific answer, but uh, is that uh, there, are, there is no correlation. So the province is good, it has money, it invests in quality of life, why not? And in ICT, why not? But uh, at the moment, I, I, I am not able to say that having good ICT infrastructures contributes to the quality of life. And this is what we want to do in Trento with this concept of a smart community. So a smart community is a community where not only the ICT infrastructures uh, improve the quality of life, but even more, where the population is conscious that ICT can contribute to change their life in a fundamental way. So this is what we want to build in, in Trento. And for the reasons I said before, we believe that Trento has the potential of becoming a lab for smart community, a lab for this concept. But this means that we really have to change something. First of all, we need to have citizens that are engaged and that collaborate with the public administration, not only in pointing out problems, in Italy we are good in pointing out problems, but also in solving them. Second, also the city has to change. They really have to open in order to give more possibilities to the citizens and the companies. Open data is a first step, but there are also data that are important and that cannot be open. All the data the, the city of Trento has about me, so my health condition, uh, my, uh, well, my, my, the, the, the procedures uh, I start with the public administration and, on, and so on and so forth, plus all the devices that are and all the procedures that are in the city. This will lead to a new generation, hopefully to a new generation of services created not just to solve problems of the, of the citizens, but also with the participation of the citizens. Now, to do this, this is a very ambitious goal from our point of view, so we need to, to, to do some preliminary steps. First is invest in education, since here we really want to create a new generation of citizens able to address this. Second, we need to involve the business in this, in this game. Third, we need also to explain to the government that they have a fundamental uh, goal, a fundamental role in this, in this game. They have the governance role, and they can give up some management or operational tasks uh, keeping this goal. Finally, which is relevant here, we need a proof of concept. So what I said before can seem very ambitious, and if we don't have a proof of that this concept can be applied, then we are lost. And what I will tell you is the Smart Campus Project, which is, in my opinion, a proof that this concept can be applied. So in Smart Campus, we reduce the smart city to the campus. That is, we use the campus as a scaled-down but complete model of a smart city. It is complete since we have the students, who are the citizens, we have the institutions, we have the politicians, we have the managers, uh, and also the campus lives in the city. So it is not just about uh, learning, it is also about living the city in a different way. In Italy, in many, many cases, university is the first time when you leave your family and uh, stay alone. So it is a different relation with the city. 
So the goal of Smart Campus is to create a new generation of services available to the students of Trento, but involving a growing community of students in all parts of the project, in all the process of creating these, these services. So in Smart Campus, we want to empower the community, the student community, to design, develop, and use innovative services to solve their own problems. So this is the lab I want to describe you here. And essentially, this is the, the, the outline of my presentation. Motivation and vision are done. So I'll move, to, I'll move to describe what we did, the first steps we did. This project started two years ago, more or less. So we are in a good uh, progress. But the initiative is very ambitious. So the project with the students will, st will end end of this year. But of course, we are launching new activities to make it sure the results are not lost. And then I will describe quickly the results and some conclusions. So what do we did? What were our initial steps? Well, first of all, we needed a platform for developing uh, these services. And we defined a platform. I don't enter in the, in the technical details. But essentially, we looked to smartphones, to the iPhone as an example. So there you have the Apple Store. You have uh, a platform where the apps run, which is the mobile phone. Uh, itself, and uh, this uh, uh, mobile phone helps developers uh, by providing many different uh, uh, APIs, many different services. Here we speak about mail, about messaging, about uh, camera, and so on and so forth. In our case, we, we speak about the services and data of the city and of the university. So we take this data from the existing systems, we make them available, uh, and we uh, enable users to develop their own services, which are then uh, um, placed in a store and accessed by users uh, through different uh, devices and by different means. Just very quick comment. This is a huge platform. It is more than one million lines of code. You can see that the estimated development effort is uh, almost 300 years uh, of development. And more importantly, we have 60 contributors uh, and uh, more than 3,000 uh, commitments, more than 3,000 uh, elementary uh, updates of codes to this platform. I will come back to these uh, afterwards. So the site you see here is, uh, is uh, an independent, independent organization that assessed the quality and the, and the sites of open source projects. Then the services. Now we have the bottle. We need the wine to start uh, playing. So we uh, deliver to the, to the students also as an initial set of services. We started with six services. Which services? Not just services for the academic life. This was what the students, uh, when we uh, asked students, they were saying, well, we want services, e-learning services. But we said, look, you have to take into account that we are not targeting your academic life in a strict sense. So, we ask them to consider also so services for socializing, for moving, for sharing, for uh, signaling problems, and so on and so forth. And in general, to take into account any service uh, that could make their life better. And that could make Trento more attractive uh, as a smart university. We work with students, and we identified eventually three different uh, dimensions uh, uh, along which uh, services uh, can, can be categorized. First of all, there is the academic life uh, here. But then there is also the practical life, both inside the university, how to pay a fee, how to register to an exam, but also outside, how to look for an accommodation, and in the, or, or how to move in the city. And then there is the social life, how to build a new uh, network of friends and colleagues uh, in an environment that may be new for me, in particular if I'm a foreign student. And we identified uh, different uh, services here that then uh, led us to the identification of the six initial services. So this, the initial instalment of services were services for traveling in the city, for discovering events in the city, for exchanging messages and creating virtual communities, for capturing experiences, and for defining CVs uh, in, in a uh, nice and uh, uh, user-friendly way. Then, with this as the initial uh, um, instalment, the initial setup of the experiment, we launched the community. So we um, try to assess the fact that the students uh, can participate in the project in any role they have in mind. So they can be users, testers, designers, developers of the services. They can bring their vision, creativity, and skills. Uh, and in particular, they are first responsible in, make, in making it sure that the services uh, developed in Smart Campus uh, serve 
their needs. Students are also important for us for sustainability. So the idea is that the project will end, will terminate at the end of this year. And if we don't have a stable community of students that takes over these services, well, services will probably eventually die in the future. Only a stable community of students can make this approach sustainable. Now, here you see the, the picture of the team at a certain point of life in the project. And you see in the lower part, the students. Here are the junior programmers. So these were students uh, till a couple of uh, uh, years ago. And then the research staff. So it is half and half at the moment. Uh, and what is nice is that the researchers and the students, uh, staff and students, work together. So you see here a team, and it is harder to detect who, who are the students uh, and who are the programmers uh, with a methodology that is the Scrum methodology. So these teams have to push forward uh, the implementation of these apps in order to achieve the goals they uh, decided for them themselves. Well, which results did we achieve? Well, and the first important result has been achieved within a course offered in, in, by the bachelor degree in computer science uh, one year ago. It was a course with 90 students. First of all, we asked this, this course was on human computer interaction, so very relevant for the activities we do here. We, ha we asked the students to help us testing and improving the, the apps, the six initial apps we provided. We got the, more than uh, 1,000 comments uh, in their diaries. We got uh, more than 100 bugs, or my programming staff says, re requests for enhancements, uh, not necessarily bugs. Uh, and also in a very creative way. So for instance, a group of students uh, took our mobility app. They tried to use uh, it uh, in a day when they were moving in Trento, reporting the effectiveness or the problems of this app in this uh, nice way using, using Google Maps. So we would have not uh, think to uh, propose such a way. Second step, we asked them, think to the next service you would like. Uh, to have in the Smart Campus Framework. We define, so uh, students uh, define groups, uh, they uh, de design the new services, and at the end we had the competition. And the winners uh, are these students, the one with the white uh, shirt. Um, and they, the reason why they won is that they identified a very relevant problem in Italy, food. So they say that there are two problems, essentially, in the canteens of the university. One, the queues, and second, the quality of food. Uh, uh, dishes that, like, that uh, uh, appears to be good are not necessarily uh, good, and dishes that are not so nice are indeed good. So there is some need to, uh, there is some um, possibilities to, to improve this situation with a solution. They call it uh, iFame. Uh, uh, this means I'm hungry in Italian. Uh, and the idea is that uh, um, this app uh, provides, allows you to check the queues, to comment the quality of food, and also to take decision on the basis of a diet. Uh, uh, when I was a student, this was not a problem at all. Money was a problem, diet was not a problem, but times are changing. Now, the prize was implement it. Now, you defined a, a nice service, you won the competition, now you have the possibility to implement it. They did so. This service uh, is uh, uh, live since November last year. And there is, uh, this, I believe, is a very positive result, uh, not only since the service is useful, but also since uh, uh, it is based on open and private data provided by the university, actually by the canteen management system of the university. We have not only the menus, which is open data, let's say, but also the current credit on the cards of the students. So the university opened private data in order to enable this, uh, this service. And there was really a collaboration between students of, and university, taking into account that here, we allow, the university allows students to criticize the quality of food. It was not easy to convince the university to allow students to do this, uh, and to convince students that this is not a forum where they you know, simply criticize, but it is a community that has to help the university to improve the quality of food and help friends to uh, find food that is good for their, uh, for their desires. And there is a growing community of students using the app. Of course, there are also negative results, uh, since we said yesterday that we scientists are not so uh, happy to, ex uh, to expose results. Uh, a second app, the, the runner-up uh, application in the comp competition was StudyMate. It was about having an agenda of courses, exams, and so. 
uh, uh, about sharing course material, about evaluating courses, so the lectures, not the food, but the lectures, and about defining study groups. Now, the implementation went well, so we had a second group of students working on the implementation on this, but we had problems. So first of all, it was a problem to integrate the systems of the university. So in the previous case, it was okay. Here, it was not okay. Then we had some problems. For instance, how you allow students to evaluate the courses. Teachers were not so, professors were not so happy about this. They did not understand that, that this can be done in a collaborative way. Well, course material, we heard before about all the uh, Problem, legal problems about sharing a course material uh, not in a so young way, let's say, without recognizing the right uh, copyrights and so on and so forth. And if you are in such a situation where you see that the university is not pulling, then students uh, stop pushing. So somehow their uh, commitment uh, decreases. At the moment, we have an app that is 98% ready, and we have difficulties uh, convincing the students to do the uh, final 2%, which is not a bad, uh, not a good uh, situation. Well, I think I'll skip some slides. Well, this was not the only uh, thing we, do, we did, but to move to the results. So, uh, first important result is that uh, uh, thanks to the community, we achieved an important evolution in the services we offered at the beginning. So we started with the six services. We have seven and a half now, with a very uh, successful IFAME and with a problematic study mate. But also the six uh, services have been radically changed uh, according to the desires uh, and to the contributions of the students. Uh, so community really worked here. Second, uh, these services are not, many of these services are not limited to the campus. And indeed, uh, we already extracted useful services uh, from smart campus that are now used in the city. Many of them are on, uh, on the Android marketplace. Uh, in particular, Viaggia Trento and Viaggia Rovereto are the two apps, the two standard apps of the two important municipalities, Trento and Rovereto, for mobility in the territory. So uh, on these apps, uh, we work together with the uh, mobility managers of the cities, uh, and uh, we um, exploit the students in order to improve the apps, to test them, and to develop them. Also, from a teaching perspective, it has been a successful experience. So this is the human-computer interaction, the one with the, the competition one year after. So, Again, it is an optional course in the third year of uh, the uh, Bachelor in Informatics. This year we had 120 students, 30% more, which is important. And in particular, more students than the total number of students enrolled in the third year in Informatics. This was strange to the beginning. We were not understanding how we could have some, so many students. It turned out that many students from other faculties uh, were participating there, since the course was uh, somehow recognized as interesting and useful, so some concrete uh, work done. Uh, the approach we decided to, to adopt this year is to ask uh, to each one of these students to bring a friend from another faculty in order to, est to extend the community and to do teamwork among students and friends uh, into different directions. So new services, we are always open, but also improve existing services and this crowdsourcing aspect. So to not to change the services, but to bring new information to the services. Very positive experience, but unfortunately, I'm not able to report the results, though I know that they are very positive. And I try to explain why I cannot report detailed results in the next slide, which is about social media and smart campus. We, of course, have to define a community. The community is a physical community, since it is the community of students, but it is also a virtual community, or a community that uses social media, virtual tools to work together. We have a forum, which is very active, and it is also a good experiment of bilingual interaction between students. Thanks to Google Translator, we allow students to write in Italian and in English and to see the, the, the threads in their own language, which has turned out to be very successful. I was not sure this would have worked, but it works reasonably well. We have social networks, so Facebook, Google, Twitter. We have a student uh, feedback through sort of private channels uh, between the students and the lab so the 1,000 comments and error reports. We have the software repository, which is, of course, an important social tool for development projects, with 60 contributors, 60 developers, more than 3,000 commitments, more than 250 uh, error reports. Most of them are closed, so don't worry. And then we have a 
quite a huge amount of statistics and analytics on app usage and on the work the students did with the apps. So we have a very large set of data on a complex and extensive participatory design or community building experiment. And we would like this set of data to be available, well, first of all, to the research community, and second, let's say, to ourselves in order to extract publications. But there are problems here. It is very hard to access and to analyze this corpus of data due to privacy issues, but also due to the fact that users have multiple identities that use in the different channels, so it is not always easy to correlate them. There are replications, so bugs appear here, are reported here and there, so we don't know how many bugs do we have. We don't know, in, uh, in the previous item, we really don't know how large is our community. If we sum up all the numbers, then it is uh, 2,000 students, which would be very good. If there are replications, then probably we, will, we have 800 students, which is still good, but not as good. There are also uh, correlations among entities, among messages in the different fora. So usually a bug is reported on the forum and it is fixed on the repository, or a request for feature comes from a diary and there is a new release in the code that uh, closes it. So we are really unable at the moment to analyze all this uh, quantity of data, also due to lack of automation in this analysis. So we... If you can help in any way with your very nice techniques, I believe some techniques I see in these two days are very, are very good. To improve this situation, I'm here to hear what you can propose. And we can make nice publications together, so we will also move to the final part of the production process. Now, conclusions, very quickly. First of all, a conclusion from the Trento point of view. So this was the initial slide I said about our vision. Now, if I look to this experiment, I have to say that we managed to create, to start creating a new generation of services, not only for citizens, but also by, uh, done by the citizens. And we had some important results uh, in, the education, in the educational dimension. I'm also reasonably happy about the engagement of the students. You never know if they work since they have the course, or if they would work also without the course, but the course, uh, the, the number of students enrolled grow, uh, grew a lot, uh, so we are happy about this. Not so happy about uh, the city that opens the system. We have seen good cases and bad cases here. And not so happy about uh, the gov governance role of the university. In many cases, the message we got from them is, uh, what is our role here? What is uh, our gain in this, in this project? I mean the administration, not the professors. Uh, and finally, we did not push the strengthening of the business community, which is indeed the, the next necessary step. So this is my last slide. It is about science to the toe, since after this presentation, you may ask yourselves, what does this have to do with the science to the toe? And this was also my question during these two days. But lucky enough, yesterday, at the end of the room, there was a poster that said that science to the toe is about social media used in all the phases of the research process. And it speaks about new ways for collaboration, easier communication, participation, more transparency and open discussion. So if I look to what is written here, well, well, perfect. I am a science to the toe project, okay? But in order for this to be true, we have to agree on the fact that in research, in particular if we speak of research in smart, smart cities and communities, then the scientist is not alone. The scientist is only one player in a broader game of research that involves citizens, students, and the governance, in our case, the university. So, that's it. I hope that we can, I really enjoyed the, the, the presentations here, and I hope that this can serve as a lab also for experimenting science to the toe results. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, for this talk. Uh, any questions? I have one to start up. Uh, you you are all already mentioned it at the end. Um, if I would think, I, I would like to have your um, system at our university. Um, how, how can you help me to convince uh, our uh, president or the administration to um, invest in this system? What, what, is it for, what is it for? What does it help the university? 
Uh, well, I, I cannot answer you uh, in a European dimension, in particular in a German dimension, okay? Since here the situation is much better than in Italy. But in Italy we have a big problem with, with junior unemployment, okay? And there are many initiatives uh, uh, that are um, growing in parallel with the universities about teaching outside the classes, about, uh, you know, educating our, uh, well, university students to do something concrete, okay? This is something that is useful. This is a way of uh, uh, making it sure that students learn by doing uh, and that the classroom is not the standard university classroom, but it is the whole city. In their courses, they do something concrete that, is, that then remains to the city. If we are able to create a network of cities, then this really can also open business perspectives. So we can also uh, have uh, students that do their own part of the work, so you can understand that also this is interdisciplinary work since you have computer scientists, you have sociologists, psychologists, uh, economists, and so on and so forth. So you really can uh, create businesses out of, of, out of it. In Italy, we, we, are, we, have, we have good contacts with some of the universities, so I'm, I cannot report results, but I, I think this can be done. And maybe after it is done in, in, uh, in Trento and in Italy, we can try and uh, export the model also to well, other universities. Perhaps it's an interesting research question to get it into other countries of the European Union. Okay, any other questions? Well, it's almost the end of the conference, so thank you very much again. Thank you.